Hi, uh, my name is Ali Rogani. I run YC's Continuity Fund, and I'm here with Sid Sabrandi, uh, an alumnus from the YC Winter Class of 2015, uh, here to talk about the fascinating company that you run, GitLab, uh, and how you built this organization. Yeah, thanks for having me. So first, tell us in your words, uh, tell us what GitLab does and uh, why it's important. So GitLab is an open source software development tool. Um, so we allow people to collaborate on software and uh, it, makes, it makes the software development process easier, faster, more efficient. And built on open source. So talk about that. Talk about the roots of the company and then sort of how you then have taken an open source platform and created a business out of it. So GitLab was started by my co-founder, Dimitri. He's now our CTO. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made it because he needed something like that himself. Uh, he started in 2011. Mm -hmm. In 2012, I saw it. I thought it makes so much sense that something you'd used to uh, collaborate is also something you can contribute back to. Mm -hmm. All my tools were open source. Mm -hmm. So I did a show Hacker News and I asked people, do you want to use GitLab as a service? Because up to that time, you still had to install it yourself. Right. And Hacker News... Uh, was very positive. Lots of people signed up, so that was the start. Um, a year later, I figured out that for a business, it was really hard to make money on the dot com. Mm -hmm. But we had all kinds of really large companies asking us for more features. And Dimitri tweeted, "I want to work on GitLab full time." So, mm -hmm. so I paying Dimitri. A year later, we incorporated, mm -hmm. and a year later, we uh, got into YC, and that's when we started growing faster. I think uh, March of. Uh, 15, we uh, graduated. We were nine people at the time. Mm -hmm. Now we're 160 people. Right. 160 people. We're sitting here in your headquarters in San Francisco. And how many people work here in headquarters? So normally it's just me. <laughs> right. So it's a headquarters head office with one person. It's one person. My wife's also here. She doesn't work at GitLab. Right. And she lives, keeps the company. She keeps <laughs> me company and we live upstairs. Right. Wow. Amazing. So where are the other 140 people? So the other... Are there 159, 159 people, are people. In, in 37 different countries all around the world? Right. And they work from the location they prefer. Mm -hmm. If you want to, we will pay for office space near your location, mm -hmm. but most people opt to work from home. So you've got one person here, you. You've got uh, 159 people working in 37 different countries and in, and in most uh, situations working from home. So probably 159 different locations. Yes. Is that right? Yes. There are no, so far, there are no two people in the same location. Wow. That's amazing. So how does it work? Like, did you uh, have the intention to build a company this way? And, or did it sort of come about and you decided to just kind of see how it went? It came about. One of our values is boring solutions. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to like innovate mm -hmm. in, in the way we structure our company. Mm -hmm. We want to do a run-of-the-mill company. Our, our product should be exceptional, mm -hmm. but all the rest of the structure shouldn't be. But it started remote. Uh, Dimitri was in the Ukraine. I was in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And then I hired people in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And after a few days of coming to my place mm -hmm. where I had an extra desk, right. they kind of opted to work from mm -hmm. home. Yep. It was natural. We, we make collaboration software that makes this easier. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, okay, for development, apparently this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And then when we graduated from YC, we bought this space. We put in a lot of desks. Mm -hmm. And we were like, bring on the salespeople. And mm -hmm. the salespeople came in. And after a few days, they started working from home. Mm -hmm. And I never told them to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I had the, the option to say, come to the office. Right. But I didn't say that. Uh, we measure results. We care about results. We don't care about where you perform your well, work. So when did you decide uh, to write your handbook? I mean, describe the handbook and how that came about. Yeah, so the handbook uh, is a public thing. It's on aboutgitlab.com slash handbook. Mm -hmm. It's over 500 pages of all the processes that we have. And I wrote it because I don't like explaining things twice. Right. Uh, we like efficiency. Mm -hmm. And we hire very intelligent people that you don't have to tell things twice. But we, we keep having new people the whole time. So mm -hmm. rather than telling a person one time, I take an extra minute to write it down, communicate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And the next person can just read up on it. Mm -hmm. And this handbook, for, for those of you who haven't seen it, I would really recommend taking a look. But it really covers uh, everything that an employee would need to know. Uh, can you talk about some of the chapters in the handbook and some of the topics covered from small to big? Yeah, so we really try to capture everything. So uh, you have an onboarding, there's an onboarding issue. It's about 80 things you have, you and others have to do. Mm -hmm. You get one for every new person that joins. Mm -hmm. You can see not only what you have to do, but also what others have to do for you. Mm -hmm. So one thing that frustrated me in the past that some people didn't do their thing and you were blocked as an employee, but you didn't know 
that other people who had to do what. Mm -hmm. and so we try to be really clear about that mm -hmm. and give people all the tools that they need. And some people start their onboarding before they get an offer because they, they can already mm -hmm. see everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, there's also like processes, like even minute things. So how do you start a video call and chat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the rule with us is you, you start it if you are not the last one that responded. Mm -hmm. So um, just, to, to, to take away all these small aggravations, mm -hmm. all these small inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. And it describes what every part of your company is working on, uh, how they work on it, how they think about it. So really try to nail that all down. And every time someone asks you a question, we try to edit the handbook, add the answer to that so mm -hmm. that the next person doesn't have to ask. Mm -hmm. And is the editing process, the process of keeping it current and fresh and the best ideas, in there, is that uh, also kind of done in an open source way or do you have any sort of governing board or any sort of editorial team that needs to make sure everything's okay? No, people, people are responsible, so everyone's responsible for it and, and, and if it's about a certain department, that department is kind of responsible for it and it's, it's open source, so we get contributions even from outside the company. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Even outside the company? Yeah. Yep. So it's public for, public for viewing and also for editing? Yeah. Our, our mission is everyone can contribute. Yeah. So uh, most, mostly those people are not, and they're not sending like five extra pages. Mm -hmm. It's just mostly small edits, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's always fun to see, uh, see people contributing to it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your time. How, where does your time go? What do you spend your time doing as a leader now of a 160 person company? that's distributed around the world. Um, how does, what's, what does the pie chart of Sid's time look like? Yeah, I, I don't think it's that different from, from other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I have lots of meetings throughout mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, most of them are video calls. Mm -hmm. Do you work a normal work day? Or because of time zone issues, you know, are you taking your, you know, an 11 p.m. conference call with people in Russia kind of thing? Yeah, not that. Uh, I need some overlap with Europe, so I yeah. normally start 8 o'clock, okay. which is, which is mm -hmm. not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have calls until 5, 6, or 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty normal to work day. Pretty, pretty normal work day. Right. And so meetings, um, how many direct reports do you have, for instance, as the CEO I've, of the company? I have now 10 direct reports. So do you guys ever have conference calls or meetings where all of your direct reports are on at the same time? Is that a part of how you run the company, or do you interact discreetly with each one of them? I mostly try to do one-on-ones mm -hmm. because it's... Um, Many, many interactions contain feedback, and if feedback is, is, is negative, mm -hmm. um, then we try to keep the audience as small as possible. So mm -hmm. it'd be between a boss and a report, mm -hmm. preferably. Mm -hmm. um, we do have an executive team meeting. Some of my direct reports are part of the executive team, mm -hmm. and in that, that, that is a be meeting. Weekly? That's a weekly? That's a weekly one-hour call. Okay. In, in GitLab, we try to have Fewer, fewer meetings mm -hmm. and more asynchronous communication. Mm -hmm. So we try to use issue trackers, mm -hmm. Google Docs, mm -hmm. uh, chat to, to facilitate things. So mm -hmm. you, you don't deal with time zones. But more importantly, if it's a meeting, everyone is forced to spend time. If you make it asynchronously, only the people that care about that subject right. have, to, have to invest time there. Mm -hmm. What do you think that the toughest thing about building the company this way has been? Um, uh, fundraising. Fundraising for a distributed company. Yeah, because um, we had some great investors yeah. um, that I would really like to have invest in the company. Luckily, we ended up with great investors mm -hmm. too. But it was very hard to see that, um, that they said, okay, you tick all the, our boxes, except for this remote thing. Mm -hmm. That's new. Mm -hmm. And we just, we can't take a risk. Mm -hmm. Like we, we just pattern match. Mm -hmm. You don't fit the pattern. Right. You might make it work, mm -hmm. but it, we, we're the best fund, one of the best funds. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, 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 we'll pick another one. We have mm -hmm. only that, that many board seats we mm -hmm. can take. That was a really hard one. Um, you try to convince them that mm -hmm. we're more effective, that we're doing a better job of onboarding mm -hmm. people, that we have a stronger culture that's right. not diluted, but right. that gets stronger by written. But mm -hmm. I wasn't able to convince each and mm -hmm. every one. But luckily, we, we did end up with a, a great fund, Argus mm -hmm. Capital, with Vili mm -hmm. Ilchev, that mm -hmm. said, okay, let's have a look at how this is performing. Mm -hmm. So they dove in, interviewed our, our senior management, mm -hmm. whether it was actually working, and mm -hmm. we managed to convince them. Right. Terrific. Do you think that every personality type can work in a company like this? Or do you think it takes a special person 
um, to be able to adapt to a situation where they're fairly isolated in terms of human to human contact with their colleagues, although obviously they're connected and they're video chatting and so on. Do you think anyone can work in a company like this or does it t do you try to screen for a particular kind of person? I don't think that, that it's isolated. Yeah. So we try to, ha I think actually people tend to see more like social interaction mm -hmm. at GitLab. Every four times a week we have a team call mm -hmm. where people just talk about their private lives for mm -hmm. half an hour. Four times a week you have a team call where people talk about their private lives? Yes. Wow, that's the, it's in the handbook. That's a must do. Um, no, it's not, you're not obligated, but I think average attendance is between 80 and 100 people. Okay. People like this. Okay. People, people, I don't know, do anything from show off their keyboard to, to showing their baby that, right. that is chewing their microphone cord uh -huh. okay. at the same time. And, and people make something special okay. out of it. Um, so it's open to the whole company and 80 to 90 people participate? Yeah. Wow. So on a video conference? Yes. Okay. What tool do you use for that? Zoom. Zoom. It's, it's been great. Right. Okay. And then we have the concept of virtual coffee breaks. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to hang out with someone, mm -hmm. it's okay. We have a name for it, mm -hmm. virtual coffee breaks. Mm -hmm. When you join the company, we force you to take 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So you get accustomed to the concept. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we try to stimulate mm -hmm. the, the water cooler talk. Right. So it's not the isolation that's the problem. The problem is the motivation. Mm -hmm. It is, there's nobody watching you right. come in or come out. Mm -hmm. So you have to be self-organized, self-disciplined yeah. to, to do that. And right. not everyone can do that. Right. So you, you, you try to filter for that, yes. for people who are self-motivated and self disciplined Result-oriented people. Right, right, got it. How does recruiting work here? Do you have recruiters all around the world? Do you have them somewhere centrally? How does, how do um, one of our recruiters lives in South Africa, mm -hmm. and one of them lives in the US. Mm -hmm. And we, do an, we let the people we decline give an MPS score, mm -hmm. and the first results are 15 scores, and they've all been a five on a scale of one to five. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure people have a great experience. Do people ever get to see each other in, in person? Do you have company yeah. get-togethers? We try to stimulate that. So mm -hmm. there's a budget if you just want to do a get-together mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. For example, we had lunch here today mm -hmm. at the office. Mm -hmm. but we How do many people came? Kirsten, I think about 10 people. 10, okay. Um, and then we have a, a big get-together every nine months. Mm -hmm. And we had it two weeks ago mm -hmm. in Cancun, Mexico. Got it. You bring the whole company together. Bring the whole company for a week. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a bit of work, but also a lot of just hanging around together, doing fun activities. Right. right. Wonderful. So tell me, for a YC company or any startup that started, and it's a, let's say they have 20, 30, 40 people, and they're all pretty much in one of single headquarters, do you think this model of a distributed workforce has to be all or nothing? Like, do you have to start at the beginning as you did and just, you know, build it that way and have the processes and the handbooks and the communication practices that make it work? Or is it like a more of a hybrid model where you've got a headquarters, but you can also accommodate a lot of distributed people? Does that also work? What are your thoughts about that? It's harder to do it hybrid. Okay. So obviously it's not impossible yeah. because I think every large organization, people are no longer in the same, mm -hmm. teams are spread among buildings and countries. Mm -hmm. So any large significant organization is going to have remote anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's being remote only makes it easier because you've, it's, you're forced to write down more. You, mm -hmm. you have more like artifacts that you mm -hmm. can share. Mm -hmm. um, if you have in-person communication, then frequently it's not written down. It's mm -hmm. harder to share. So I think, I think it's just that we have an easier time than those companies. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any limit to how big you can grow in terms of your employee base running the company totally distributed? Like, do you think you could have 10,000 people one day all working from home and kind of interacting in this way? Or is there a certain scale at which this model starts to break. So far it's working better as we grow bigger. Okay. So I don't see it yet. Mm -hmm. We try to be not religious about it. Mm -hmm. um, if we find out something else works uh, better. I think what other companies find, if they go from on-premises to having satellite offices, mm -hmm. or being in one office to satellite offices, the people in the satellite office uh, tend to feel left out yeah. of, of gossip, of promotional yeah. opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've been able to avoid. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Um, what would your, uh, I feel like uh, this is a fascinating experiment in scaling the company and it seems like, uh, scaling a company, it seems like it's going quite well. One of the things that's remarkable to me is uh, roughly two years ago when you were at YC, I believe you said you were nine people and you're about 160 people today. So you're significantly bigger uh, and have grown extremely rapidly uh, in, a, in a very innovative model. Um, so I'm curious, you know, as you, you know a lot of other YC companies, you know, you know a lot of startups, um, what do you think the, what's the, share with us a couple of pieces of wisdom um, that you've gained in terms of scaling an organization this way? Ooh. 
So um, we try to write down a lot. Yeah. So um, about any time we learn something about leadership, we put it on about gitlab.com mm -hmm. slash handbook slash leadership. Mm -hmm. So I'd suggest they go there. Right. Um, it's been hard in the beginning to mm -hmm. get people to write in the handbook mm -hmm. to make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been a broken record mm -hmm. about can you write that down? Mm -hmm. Can you create an issue for that? Mm -hmm. um, but if you do it long enough, that, that kind of starts right. filtering down habit. and mm -hmm. you start hearing other people say it within right. the company. Yeah, getting, getting people to write stuff down, that, that's been a, a huge challenge, but a very rewarding thing. And sometimes people come back after a while, like, you were so annoying about writing mm -hmm. stuff down. But now I hear myself saying it myself because right. I, think, I find it. those situations where it hasn't been written down right. and people have to ask one mm -hmm. another, it's super inefficient. Right, that's, that's quite interesting. Last question, five years from now, when you're looking back on GitLab, what's your, what do you hope to achieve uh, on that kind of a time frame? What's your vision for GitLab over a five-year time frame? Yeah, I, five years, I don't mind if we're remote only or that we have offices where everyone mm -hmm. is. I'm fine with either. Mm -hmm. I want us to achieve our, vi our mission of mm -hmm. everyone can contribute. So mm -hmm. we hope to be the tool that changes culture from read only to read write. Mm -hmm. Where now, if you watch a movie, mm -hmm. you, you can do it. You get an end product, you get a right. binary. Mm -hmm. And hopefully in the future, you get all the different video screens mm -hmm. and all the different montages mm -hmm. in a human readable mm -hmm. format and you're able to contribute to that. And we want to make that possible for for books, for software, for everything. Wonderful, that is an amazing mission. Thank you so much for your time today and we look forward to tracking how things go. Thanks man. Yeah, thank you.